Yes, it is here. This is Yongnuo's latest 42.5mm f1.7 Mark II. At time of making this video, I may be the only guy on YouTube reviewing this lens. I'm doing this out of curiosity. And seriously, especially after all those horrific reviews I heard from our very unbiased, trustworthy internet. Hmm. I'm curious. So let's find out together. Hi, my name is Jimmy Chang, a photographer and filmmaker. This channel is created to help you become a better photographer, videographer, or both, by sharing my 16 years of experience working in the commercial world. I also review text and gadget to help you get those shots and videos better and quicker. I'm also an Olympus ambassador, so you will see a lot of Michael Fortas equipment in my videos too. But I'm talking about photography and filmmaking in this channel, so everyone is welcome. So smash that subscribe button and hit that bell to stay notified for all my upcoming contents. Disclaimer, this video isn't sponsored, but Yongna did ask and send me their latest and supposedly improved version of the 42.5mm 1.7 lens for an unbiased review. So I'll be very brutal and honest here. I said that I was curious because even my friend Rob made a video reviewing the Mark 1 and his conclusion was avoid at all cost. Pretty serious, right? So, when Yono contacted me, told me about a new version of this very lens is available, I accepted the offer, just to find out if this new version is any good as a lens, but more interestingly, can it really be an alternative option to the very established and capable Olympus M3 Core 4518 and the Panasonic 42.517 OIS? And what about Yi 42.518, which is currently the cheapest AF lens for Micro Four Thirds, that my other good friend Robin recently reviewed. Yongnuo 42.517 is a budget lens, so don't expect anything premium here. The lens is mostly plastic and it feels very light, despite its physical size. The dedicated AF MS switch is reassuringly stiff and the focusing ring is second grade smoothness. It's not bad, but it's definitely no Kylie Spump silkiness. However, there's one thing that is worth shouting out, and that is the metal lens mount. Yes, this second cheapest AF Michael Forthless lens does sport a shiny lens mount. This is great considering the main competitor, Yi 42.517, only has plastic mount. In my eye, the metal lens mount wins any day and I wouldn't mind paying a little premium to have a mount that is made with metal than plastic. Overall, it's not bad. Not bad at all for a budget lens. Well, what should you expect from a plastic fantastic lens apart from feeling cheap and light? I said that earlier, this Yono 42.5mm 1.7 Mark II is very deceiving. If you just look at its size, it's a little bit bigger than the Panasonic Leica Summilux 2514, but it's about 25% lighter at only 146 gram. But still can't beat Olympus Dinky 4518, which is at a featherweight of 116 gram. Speaking of Olympus, wait for my comparison video to find out how this new version of Yongnuo 42.517 Mark II compares to the Olympus Legendary 4518. Of course, people have different preferences when it comes to shapes and sizes. Yongnuo's 42.517 Mark II's larger body may suit people with larger hands or for those who prefer a more secure two-hand holding. So, to me, it's very comfortable to hold and balances well on any Micro Four Thirds cameras, including lighter models like the Pen or EM10. With that said, handling is pretty good. Performance is one area that lets the original down particularly in AF accuracy and speed. So Yongnuo can't release a replacement without at least improving one of these areas. 
Well, I'm very happy to report that Yongno does fix not one, but both areas by introduction of the new stepping motor, or simply STM. STM has been widely used in other premium lenses from the brands like Canon. It's not only quicker than older type of AF motor, but it's also a lot smoother and quieter. It has a more linear behavior that's great not only just for photography, but for videos too. This should greatly improve continuous autofocus performance as a result. As you can see from this clip, I've tested the Yono 4217 Mark II on my EM1 Mark III. The lens keeps lock on my face very well in video mode and even when I'm moving around. It also works with enhanced eye and face detection on both EM1 Mark III and the EM10 Mark IV. You can see that the EM10 Mark IV has no problem seeing my face and eyes. In short, the new stepping motor makes a night and day difference for the new Mark II lens. Having said that, this is where the great news ends, in the performance department. First, the aperture motor is still the same as the original, which means a little slow and pretty loud too. Slow aperture can affect the overall AF performance in photography. This is due to the design on how modern digital lenses are performed. If you set the lens aperture at anything lower than 5.6, you'll find there's a slight delay in frame per second burst with CAF enabled. It is because the aperture needs to open and close in every shot. However, as said, this is an isolated case, and it does not affect the likes of Pro Capture, Single AF, or even video recording. Because in these modes, the aperture is fixed as soon as you hit the shutter or record button. Finally, while I love the dedicated AF-MF button, yeah, definitely not as slick as the Olympus menu clutch, the menu focusing action is terrible. Apart from menu clutch feature Olympus lenses, other AF micro forward lenses detect the speed when you rotate the focusing ring in MF mode. The faster you turn the focusing ring, the more distance the lens elements travel. And the slower you turn, less distance is covered, resulting in a more precise focusing action. Yongno 42.517 Mark II has a constant speed for manual focusing. This may be good for ultra-fine adjustment, but if you want to manually focus from infinity to its closest focusing distance at 30cm, it will take about a year. No, nope, I'm not joking, because you will have to turn the focusing ring for about 1000 times before you get there. And yeah, I don't think it looks good when other people see you doing that in public too. But I don't think these negatives are going to be a deal breaker for most. The slower and noisier aperture motor isn't too bad in real use. Because just imagine, for a medium tele portrait lens, how often would you stop down the lens? And even if you do, the chances is that you're taking detailed close up or punching landscape. That you will need to use CAF. Therefore, what I said above doesn't really matter at all. The MF issues? Well, if you're getting an AF lens, then the chances of using MF is pretty rare unless you're doing some manual work in video recordings. The biggest news, of course, is the stepping motor, which does improve the overall performance of the new Mark II lens by quite a margin. You can see from the images, with 9 elements in 8 groups, 2 of which are ED elements, Yongno 42.517 Mark II is a decent performer on its own. At wide open 1.7, central sharpness is definitely there, but the edges are noticeably softer. But like most lenses, stopping down does improve things dramatically. At f2.8, the entire frame, except extreme edges, is already looking very decent. Optimal sharpness is achieved at f6.3, and everything is crisp until diffraction kicks in at f11. Vignette is present, but not bad for a budget lens. Noticeable between wide open 1.7 and f2, and there is also a hint of barrel distortion, but nothing I would say serious, especially considering there's no lens profile that Olympus or Panasonic cameras can use to correct in camera. Don't worry, it's an easy fix in post. Chromatic aberration is present too, but not severe or destructive. Oh yes, you may not have heard about destructive CA. Post-editing CA removal is basically a selective desaturation, 
So when fringing is very heavy, to the point that it creates a thick line around the high contrast areas, simple desaturation will only remove the purple or green, but leaves a very thick, like very thick grey line instead, and they don't look good. But it is lucky that you don't get that with this lens. Yongno doesn't bother telling you what coating they use on this lens either, but generally flare is well controlled and is in line with most standard kit lens you have seen on the market. Oh yes, bokeh is the most important thing, right? Especially for the target audience, namely portrait photographers. <laughs> just, I'm just joking. Well, for those who adore bokeh, you'll be glad to hear that Yongno 42.5 1.7 Mark II does produce some pleasing bokeh. Due to inherent fridging issues, you may find them on the edges of the bokeh balls, especially those created by specular highlights in the distance. It's not intrusive, but just something to be reminded of. The lens has seven aperture blades, and your perfect circle bokeh ball will start to lose shape when you stop down the lens. But I'm just only being academic here, and who will study bokeh ball anyway? Otherwise, its bokeh can be creamy and pretty soft, which generate a rather vintage looking rendering, which I personally quite enjoy. At time of making this video, this lens isn't available in European market, so I don't know the retail price of it, but if I have to guess, it won't be much more than the original lens, and that would mean Yongno 42.5 1.7 Mark II will be slightly more expensive than the crazy cheap Yi 42.5 1.8, but still significantly cheaper than both Olympus and Panasonic offerings. Based on price, I would recommend this lens to any beginner portrait photographers and those with limited budget. This Mark II has significantly improved over the older brother, especially from the AF accuracy and overall speed improvement standpoints. Now, you can have one of the cheapest and performing AF Micro Four Third lenses on the market from another ambitious Chinese lens manufacturer. On that note, this is the end of the video. What do you think about Yongno 42.517 Mark II? Do you have the original? Thanks again for watching, and you know what to do now. Thumb if you enjoyed this video, and sub if you want to support this channel, and me. Peace!